Mike Pence turned out to be one of the many layers that protected democracy in 2020. But Trump's continued push of the big lie has fueled a wave of Republicans now running to replace key election officials, candidates who have made clear that if asked, they do Trump's bidding next time. Earlier this week, we traveled to battleground Arizona, where the outcome of these statewide midterm races could make all the difference when it comes to counting the vote. Democrat Katie Hobbs never expected that her role as Arizona's Secretary of State would become a major partisan battleground. I think there's people who are never going to believe a word I say about the elections or, frankly, anything else, because a lot of these people are being misled. After certifying Joe Biden's win over Donald Trump in 2020 by just over 10,000 votes, Arizona's Republican legislature called for an audit of Arizona's most populous county, Maricopa. Nearly one year and half a million dollars later, they confirmed Biden as the winner. But former President Trump has continued to spread his big lie. We had a tremendous victory in Arizona that was taken away. And his party is buying it. In a recent ABC News poll, 71 percent of Republicans think Biden's win is illegitimate despite zero evidence of widespread voter fraud. Here in Arizona, Republicans are doubling down in their devotion to Donald Trump and filling up ballots with extremists and conspiracy theorists. Mark Fincham, who was at the Capitol on January 6th, though he says he did not go inside, is hoping to replace Katie Hobbs to oversee voting in the state and is publicly affiliated with the Oath Keepers and was at a QAnon conference. One of the clear um, things that they're trying to do is, is have loyalists in all these offices to have people who would be willing to overturn the will of the voters in future elections. Hobbs' term as Arizona's chief election officer is ending, and she's now a Democratic candidate for governor. But she worries about those running to replace her. Election fraud is at the core of many Republican campaigns across the country and here in Arizona. They told us that Russia interfered in our elections in 2016 and that it was stolen. But now turn a blind eye to any allegation of election fraud in 2020. Republican Abraham Hamaday is running for attorney general. You believe the election was stolen? No, I believe the election was rigged. But you've seen all the legal cases in Arizona. You saw that they did an audit. And you're still not convinced? There's a lot of unanswered questions. The Army reservist and former prosecutor is an avid Trump supporter. Do you think Joe Biden is the duly elected president? Well, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a good Army officer. I'm a captain. Joe Biden is the current commander in chief. That's right. Former President Trump says he wasn't. Why do you support someone who doesn't believe that the election was valid. There's a lot of questions. And for Americans to be concerned about the election doesn't make them, you know, conspiracy theorists. And those who win these critical races will be in a position to confirm or cast doubt when votes are tallied. An ABC News analysis of 12 high-profile battleground states found at least 16 Republican candidates running for statewide office have refused to acknowledge Biden's win. We had a shady, shoddy, corrupt election in 2020, and the people of Arizona don't look kindly on having their vote stolen or watered down with um, fraudulent votes. Harry Lake, a former local Fox anchor, is the leading Republican candidate for governor in Arizona. The media is part of the problem. Media is not reporting it. Media has never reported our forensic audit fairly. Lake secured Trump's endorsement and campaigned with him last month. Harry Lake, I'll tell you, she is incredible. She's going to be your next governor. How does this happen that people believe these lies? that the election was stolen. You basically can't win the Republican nomination here unless you're all in on Donald Trump. Steve Irvin has been covering Arizona politics for more than 20 years at ABC's Phoenix affiliate, KNXV. He says he's never seen anything like it. I think if the election result doesn't work out in their favor three years down the road, we might see something that we've never seen before in this country. And what do you expect to happen? What happens if a governor doesn't certify an election and send those electors to the Electoral College? If you get to that point, it's kind of uncharted territory. I mean, it's the tipping point for a constitutional crisis, potentially. 
For more now, let's bring in our chief legal analyst, Dan Abrams. Good morning, Dan. I want to start with Steve Irvin's last comments. Are we looking at a tipping point for a constitutional crisis? What could a secretary of state, an AG, a governor do to change anything? Look, I don't think we're at a constitutional crisis yet. But if a governor and a secretary of state in particular decide that they don't want to certify an election where there's no real question about what the outcome is, yes, you probably first end up in the courts, but most likely it ends up in the hands of Congress allowing them to decide who the winner is in a particular state. And certainly that's not something that anyone wants. The one thing I would say is that it, there tends to be a lot more rhetoric when people don't have the power to make any decisions than when they do, when they're actually in place somewhere. I mean, even look at what happened in the state of Arizona with this recount by a very highly partisan group. Once they got in, once they saw the actual ballots, they had to come out and say, well, there was no fraud here that we can find, and the election results were correct. So, yes, it's a problem. Yes, it's something we should be concerned about, but we're not there yet. And Dan, you not only have these efforts to empower partisan politicians to overturn elections, but you also have many states making rules that make it harder to vote. Yeah, and, and let's distinguish between two types of rules. First of all, yes, there are rules out there that make it harder to vote. Identification rules, for example, um, making it harder to vote absentee or early, making fewer ballot boxes. And you can certainly argue that they're fixing problems in these places that, that don't exist, and you can disagree with them. But the courts have given pretty wide latitude in terms of states being allowed to, to make those kinds of rules. Uh, the far more dangerous ones, from my perspective, are the ones that suggest that the state legislatures or highly partisan bodies should be able to literally overturn the election results. And in Arizona, there was a proposal just like that uh, that was just rejected by the top Republican in the state, which should be a big relief to anyone in the state who says, I want my vote to determine the outcome rather than a partisan a body like a state legislature. They did shoot that one down, but a lot to keep track of in the upcoming months. Thanks, Dan. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.